I had just moved out of a share house in the suburbs and into my own crappy one bedroom apartment in the city. I am a male and at the time was around 25 years old. My apartment, while old and small, was located about 500 meters from one of the most popular night spots in the inner city. As I was in my mid 20s and out on my own, this was the perfect place for me. This was because my friends and I were quite social and would frequent bars and nightclubs in the city, and the taxi fares were starting to add up. Also, this new apartment was close to my work, so the move made sense. I got settled in right away and invited my friends over for pre drinks before hitting the clubs. Due to the limited space in the apartment, this means that some friends were inside and some were drinking on the walkway just out front. We had the music up and had just started drinking, but between songs I could hear the couple next door arguing. Now the apartment was old and crappy, which meant thin walls as well, so I pressed an ear to the wall in order to listen. I hadn't met any of my new neighbors at the time, as I didn't take too long in moving in, and I didn't see anyone during. I was curious. Judging from what I could determine while eavesdropping, there were a gay couple in their early 30s. One of the men was yelling at the other to go next door and tell us to keep it down. The other was arguing that it was just a housewarming and to let it go for the night. Since I didn't want to cause too much trouble, I marshaled everyone outside to start making our way to the club, leaving my new neighbors in peace. Later that night, I came home alone as I was tired from the move and decided to let my friends carry on partying without me. I arrived at my door and proceeded to fumble around for my keys. When I looked up to see a man standing on the walkway in front of the next door apartment smoking a cigarette, he was tall and thin with brown, oily hair. I noticed that he had a cut lip and a faded but still visible black eye. Good day, I said. Sorry about the noise earlier, correctly assuming he was my neighbor. He replied, nah, you're right, mate, I'm Chris, and he shook my hand. I noticed his knuckles were red and a little bit scratched up, so I knew something was off. I apologized for the noise and said, I hope I didn't cause any trouble for you. He withdrew his hand with a soft but cracking voice and said, nah, it's all right. Rick just gets a bit cranky sometimes, I'm used to it. With that, I finished off the conversation and told Chris that I'd see him later. It was about 2am at this point, and I just wanted to sleep, but couldn't help worrying about the potential domestic abuse going on next door. I decided to keep an eye on it for now, as I didn't have all the info. For all I knew, he could have gotten into a fight with someone else. As the weeks passed, I noticed that my new neighbours got drunk regularly and would argue almost every time. I could tell that Rick was the dominant one, as his voice was a lot deeper and Chris seemed to be afraid of him during their shouting matches. This is why I kept my distance and never really socialized with them. I would even overhear them arguing about me and that Rick thought that Chris liked me, etc. I would just tune out all of this with headphones and video games, not to mention an active social life and full-time work to keep me occupied. I did find myself avoiding having guests over because of the neighbors. I would opt to meet people out as their arguments would be quite upsetting. This was working out fine enough until Christmas Eve that year. I was arriving home after having come from some last minute Christmas shopping. I was getting ready for a night of present wrapping as I was to visit my family the following day for Christmas. As I arrive home, I noticed two police cars outside and Anna, an Asian woman who lived a few apartments up from Chris, screaming. I asked her what happened, and all she said was, It's just so sad, while sobbing. I could see three officers trying to restrain someone, and there was blood on their uniform. I came just a little bit closer to see Chris's oily brown hair in the centre of the affray. His face was bleeding from his jaw where he had apparently been slashed by something sharp. They got him to his feet 
and I could see that his cheek had been cut so deep the skin was flapping open as he struggled and resisted with the police. I recalled in shock, and I went to comfort Anna, who was crying uncontrollably at this point. Suddenly, Rick's voice boomed out of nowhere. You see what you've done? You loser, just kill yourself! This frightened me, and my instinct was to get me and Anna to safety. Even though the cops were here, they had their hands full with Chris, and I certainly didn't want to get involved in such an ugly fight where knives were involved. Anna refused to come with me, and said she would be fine. I looked around to see where Rick was, and he kept yelling at Chris the whole time. The three cops struggled to restrain him, and I could hear Chris whimpering apologetically in between. I couldn't see where Rick was, so I decided to just go to my apartment and lock the door. As I turned to go, I froze, as Rick's voice boomed. Where do you think you're going? A chill went down my spine as my brain struggled to reconcile the fact that these words were coming from Chris's mouth. I felt panic grip me as I realized that all this time Rick and Chris were the same person. All the fighting, laughing, drinking, and carry on that I couldn't help overhearing the last couple of months had come from one solitary person, a lonely guy in his small one-bedroom apartment. For some reason, this made me feel sick. I later learned from Anna that this wasn't the first time the police had come out to take Chris away. Anna explained that he spends a few months at the local psychiatric hospital each time. His father owned the apartment, so it was here waiting for him when he got out. I moved out a few months later, and while it's a sad situation for Chris, I really do feel for him.